Hi, I'm Zach Myers with Fighter Freightliner in Columbus, Ohio. Back today on behalf of Exam Transport and Company, I'm going to go over all the details on the inside of this 110 inch luxury custom sleeper. The inside of the truck is equipped with an air conditioning, Coleman mock rooftop air conditioner. To operate the air conditioner, all you do is turn it to cool and adjust it to the desired temperature. In order for this to operate, the APU has to be on. I will show you how to do that in just one moment. This is your S-Bar diesel fired bunk heater. In order to operate it, you hold it down to highlight its operation, press it one more time, and it will say heater enabled. You'll turn the temperature up to your desired temperature, and that's all you have to do. It will continue to run as long as it's on. In order to turn it off, you hit it one time, it'll say heater stopped. The heat for this will come out below the bed or the, the, in the dinette section and it is very warm. For your rooftop, to turn it on, again, you push the power on, you can adjust the speed and bring fresh air in as desired. It's a very nice feature. To turn it off, you just turn it off with the power button. This is your inverter, okay? We have it on right now and you can probably see that there is a green light illuminated. All right, I'm gonna turn it off for the sake of discussion. Now it's off. Now we did have the TV on just now, the microwave, they all went off, they turned off. So when you want to have run a, a hair dryer, curling iron, all of those in, utilities that, that can do all that inside the truck by turning the inverter on, okay, the inverter, you press it on. In about 30 seconds, you'll hear some beeping. That's what that noise was, was stating that the inverter has been engaged. Now the television is turning on, which you'll see here in a moment. The microwave is lit up, okay? This is a um, convection microwave oven. You can cook popcorn, you can cook steak, you can cook cookies. It's a fantastic unit, okay? So your, in, your inverter will allow you to operate your television. It'll allow you to operate your microwave and your induction cooktop. And of course, you have your lighting that's through your 12 volt system. The inverter, I believe, is a 1500 watt inverter. That means if you exceed that, you're liable to have electrical issues. So you don't want to have a floor space heater on. You don't want to have your curling iron on and your hair dryer on at the same time. Okay? Lighting is really nice inside of the sleeper. For example, this light switch is operated right there. You can adjust it for reading or to see your controls. This is your auxiliary air conditioning and heating unit. This is ran when the truck is going down the road, okay? When the engine is on and you want heating and cooling, all you have to do is turn it on right here, okay? You can adjust the temperature from hot to cold by adjusting this thermostat as well. In addition, you have your ceiling light switch back here. There's also one located in the front when you get inside the truck. On and off, located right there. Here, you have your 110 volt electrical outlet. It also has USB ports for charging your phones, your iPads, your smart pads, whatever it may be. A 29 inch flat screen television comes equipped inside the sleeper. Turning on the television, there's auto programmed in all the trucks for local channels. So no matter where you're at around the country, you will automatically get an updated 
channel list of programming available in the area which is pretty nice there's a lot of channels generally in addition there's a wine guard satellite this is an in motion satellite switch in order for this in motion satellite to work you do have to have a cable subscription so you will talk to your cable service provider they will give you an RV type of, of unit to install into the truck and once that is installed we'll show you here in a second then all you'd have to do is turn it on in order to get your satellite service the truck will come equipped with a blue ray disc player you can turn it on open it and load it like every other blu-ray player and CD player out there DVD player this is your connection for your in motion satellite service so whether whomever your service provider is for um, satellite television you will take that receiver you will screw it to this insert it into this custom cavity here and turn on your satellite switch that we covered a second ago and you will be able to get all of your normal satellite television stations your APU also known as an auxiliary power unit also known as a generator is located conveniently right here next to the bed when the bed is folded down trolls are right next to the head end of the bed for easy access to turn on the generator you press the on button it'll play say please wait APU starting sometimes it might take 30 seconds to a minute depends on where you're at in the time of year it, it will probably need to warm up before it starts this unit will provide you with 110 volt power and will also provide you with your rooftop air conditioning power your rooftop air conditioner will not operate unless the APU is on so when you're driving down the road you won't be able to turn this on okay it's either this or the truck to provide heating and cooling unless you're using the S bar diesel heater that however will operate at any time because it runs on the 12 volt system the AC switch here and the heating switch and the left cold arrow and the right hot arrow will not be used at any point in time this unit does not have heating and cooling built into it so all you're getting from this is electricity to turn it off you simply push off now a second ago I believe you probably heard a beeping sound we're going to turn it back on that beeping sound was your induction cooktop your induction cooktop is located over here. So our beeping sound just occurred again, which means your induction cooktop is powered up. You can see that the red light is flashing. That means it has power. If you turn it on, then you'll go through the functions to, to determine what heating you would like to have it on. The induction cooktop will not burn you anything that a normal cooktop would allow you to cook with your induction cooktop it has a nice instruction manual that you can look at that will give you all the information regarding how to operate it counter space is a luxury inside these units as you can see here the cooktop comes with a very nice hard surface cover plate giving you much more increased room in order to cook or do whatever you want to do without having to worry about cracking your induction cooktop also you have your spice racks that have been cut out behind it is stainless which allows you to clean it so spice racks you also have an electrical outlet here 110 volt for whatever cooking devices you in addition you might want to have for your kitchen Inside the sleeper is a 7.5 cubic feet stainless steel Novacool fridge and freeze, freezer side by side combination. The left side is your freezer, the right side is your refrigerator. 
to keep it cool and to adjust the temperature, back here is the control to do so from colder to warmer. In order for this to operate, you will want to have your inverter light switch on at all times. The green light on the inverter needs to be on at all times. Again, you have your additional countertop space back here. Your sink has a hard surface cover plate as well, just like the induction cooktop. You have your hot water, your cold water, your hot water heater as well, um, located right here. The dinette table located back here is operated by pulling this down, releasing the switch and lowering the dinette table. You can hear it lock into place. It has recessed cup holders, which is nice for when you're driving down the road, if you have drinks and such that you do not want to have fall off. The dinette section has very comfortable seats on both sides and prepare the bed to come down. You'll pull up on the unit, push this bar in order for this to come up twist this knob by twisting the knob to the left it will lower the bed and the mattress will follow it is equipped with a seat belt as well for the person sleeping going down the road now an upgraded memory foam mattress comes standard in the trucks to get the seat belt to work Simply insert it like you would any other seatbelt and pull it to tighten. This is a full size mattress combination. Inside this 110 inch sleeper is a multitude of cabinetry. You have your lower cabinets that go around half of the width of the sleeper in addition to the upper cabinets. Premium finish, premium hardware, lots of space. Full-size shower and potty configuration is located inside the sleeper. Shower head, removable, hot and cold controls, shower light, rooftop vent located inside here as well for fresh air and to let steam escape. The potty is located down on the bottom portion of it. As you can see, I am six foot three inches tall, 200 pounds, and there's lots and lots of space in here. It's a great feature to the sleeper. The shower light switch, again, is located on the outside of the shower. You want to make sure that the light is turned on at the switch as well. You have your water pump that's located here for shower, um, for your sink, for your potty, you will want to have your water pump on when water is needed. Blackout curtains are included in each sleeper. What's really nice about this feature is they have magnetic closure. So you don't have to fuss with snaps 
or zippers or anything like that. You just go right back together with them and they close and they open, providing a very nice dark environment for during the daytime. The seats include raising and lowering ability, lumbar support, three different locations. They're very nice cloth seats. Arm rest adjustability on both sides for that perfect comfortable position when you're driving down the road. And the seats do obviously move forward and backwards. The dash switches consist of a light test. You can push this switch and it will go through and do all of your pre-trip light tests to ensure everything is working. You have a foot well light switch, the dome light switch for inside the sleeper. This is your utility light switch. This is what turns on the light switch in the back of the box, as you can see here. Please note that this will not work at maximum speeds on the road. You have to come to a slow speed in order for the utility light to come on. You have your override switch and your engine shutdown switch, your hill stop assist switch. This is always on unless it's turned off. This will help you for backing into loading docks. These are auxiliary switches. As you can see here, you have your lift gate switch. In order for them to operate, they need to be on. You have your suspension height switch with the dolly legs. If you're going to need the dolly legs and there's going to be a forklift in the truck, you will lower the suspension before you put down the dolly legs. In order to raise the suspension, you will push it again. Here's your parking brake. This has an auxiliary USB port located here. This does work with Apple CarPlay and Android and connects to the Kenwood aftermarket receiver. In addition, you have your temperature control switches, which are pretty standard for any truck or automobile. Uh, an additional 12 volt power outlet and another additional USB port for charging phones and things of that nature. The truck is equipped with a Kenwood 6.1 inch receiver stereo. It's also a monitor where you can monitor your three camera system. Your forward camera, your backup camera, and your inbox camera as you can see here. In order to illuminate the inbox camera, again, you have your utility light switch. Okay, Hit the home button. Go to what I like to call as a, Ru Ru a Rubik's Cube. Thank you very much. A Rubik's Cube. Press on the Rubik's Cube. Hit your audio video in. Your audio video in, that is where you monitor the in-box camera. Okay. In addition to that, this truck is equipped with a DVR. The DVR will record in 15 minute incre increments, at which point after that, and when the SIM, SIM cards are full, it will begin to overwrite itself. This red switch here and the microphone switch here, the microphone is for your Bluetooth on your phone, and the switch here controls the switcher. As you can see here, it's showing you your forward camera, your backup camera, and your inbox camera. Generally speaking, you'll keep this switch up. Okay, now please note that it is somewhat slow when it's transferring from the switch to the camera from the DVR. Now we're back into the inbox camera mode. Okay, if you go back to your home button, there's a second button up from here. There's three lines. You press on that. You go to camera. Now you have your forward facing camera. Now you have your rear facing camera. Please note, if you hit down there, it'll close out the camera. So if you want to get back into it, again, the second button from the bottom with the three lines, hit camera. So if you push on the top portion, the upper half of the screen, it will then switch between cameras. The radio and the truck are hooked up to a 
digital video recorder. The digital video recorder is located behind this panel and it is right here. The key that look, looks like a lockbox key is what you would use to unlock it. There is a lock on the DVR control box that you'll put the key in and turn it in order to push back the cover plate and remove one of the two SIM cards in the event of an accident or some theft and you need to access that footage you'll take the key you'll put it inside of the lock turn it slide back the cover plate and remove the SIM cards the DVR records in 15 minute increments throughout the entirety of the space of each card once the once the cards are full then it will begin to override itself so the DVR system is there for you to protect you in the event of an accident or some other type of situation that requires the footage to be accessed.